and welcome to this week's YouTube video. Today I am going to show you how I painted this tiger. It will be a time lapse video, but I will talk about what I am doing as I go along. So let's get straight into the video. This tiger was painted in four sittings. The first sitting is really just to get some paint on my canvas so that I can get the placement of my tiger correct. I'm focusing on the drawing. I'm thinning my paints with mineral spirits. I'm not worried about my painting not looking great at this stage. In fact, I prefer it because I don't want to be too precious about painting over the top of it. If I am too careful and precise with this layer, it will prevent me from being looser on the subsequent layers. Once I've got my tiger on there, I leave it to dry overnight and will have another go at it the next day. Because the paint is so thin, it will be dry in about 24 hours. I will paint sittings 2, 3 and 4 a la prima. I want my paint to remain wet because I want to be able to manipulate it and push and pull it about. So I will use a bit of linseed oil on these sittings. I will also do these sittings on consecutive days in blocks of no more than three hours. There are two important things to take into account when painting an animal with stripes. The first thing is to understand the limitations of your reference photo. When a camera takes a photo, generally everything is in focus, but this is just not how the eye sees. The eye has a central point of focus and then everything around the periphery begins to blur until it all becomes very out of focus. When you are painting an animal with spots or stripes, if you don't make adjustments in your reference photo, your painting will look off. It is one of those occasions where you have to forget what you think you see in the reference photo and paint what you know to be correct. In this painting, I have decided that this area here will be my central point of interest. If I do not adjust my values, edges and colours in the area outside of this central point of interest, different areas of my painting will compete for my viewer's attention. So what can I do to help direct my viewer's attention to this area here? Number one, value. In my reference photo, my tiger's stripes are the darkest value in the photo. I need to adjust my stripes in terms of value if they are not to compete against each other in this painting. My darkest black is here. I have used ivory black plus Elysian crimson solidly in the eye area. For the rest of my black, I have either mixed up a rich black of burnt umber plus ultramarine or I have used burnt umber plus orange. This orange will be yellow ochre light plus cadmium red. So I have reduced the value of my black by mixing in other colours. I have narrowed the contrast of my stripes and fur in this area here by lightening my stripes. I have my dark blacks in my area of interest and my lighter blacks outside it. Number two, edges. I have my harder edges in my area of interest. In fact, that edge on the eye is my hardest edge, which happens also to be my area of highest contrast, as I have black next to white. But notice how soft my areas are generally. I'm suggesting those stripes, and as I move out of my area of interest, I just start losing edges. And I am also exaggerating that shape with my brushwork. So it sort of feels like the tiger is swirling out of its background. I did this to create interest in my painting. If I think I see a pattern of shapes emerging from my reference photo, I will always exaggerate it as the eye seeks out pattern. It is just a natural thing that humans do. Number three, colour and temperature. Whilst it is tempting to paint your tiger stripes either black or perhaps black plus white in the lighter areas, this will not help your painting. You must think of black in terms of temperature. So I can make my black warm by adding yellow, red or orange, 
or I can push it further towards the blue by adding ultramarine. In this painting, I have used both an ivory black and also a rich black. Mixing your own black that is not as intense as ivory black will give me a transparent dark which I can shift in temperature very easily. I just add more blue where I want it cool and I add more brown where I want it warm. As a rule, I will generally add a warm dark next to a cool light. But you have to bear in mind which area you are trying to highlight. So I have a really warm dark here which is warmer in temperature than this area here. But here I have laid a cooler dark, which is cooler than this area here and here. Just remember that cool recedes and warm comes forward. If I had put a lot of warm colours under the tiger's chin, it would have stood out. And do I really want that? No, I don't. But then I had to warm this area up here because I had a triangle effect going on. So it was necessary for balance. Painting can be very intuitive and very often because your eye is seeking out pattern and balance, your gut instinct will tell you where to make the adjustments. You just need to listen to it and go with it. The turquoise that is in the background has been mixed from green and blue and white. I made my green using yellow ochre light, cadmium yellow and ultramarine. I then mixed ultramarine plus white separately and mixed my green into my white. I have mixed this turquoise into all of the browns in the tiger's fur to varying degrees. The cooler browns have more turquoise than the warmer areas. Using your background colour within the object itself will help integrate the tiger into its background. For my browns, I have used a combination of warmer browns, which are burnt umber plus yellow ochre light plus cadmium red, or burnt umber plus cadmium yellow plus cadmium red. If I want to lighten my brown, I either add yellow or white, or perhaps a combination of the two. If I want to cool my browns down, I use the turquoise. Alternating between warm and cool colours will give your painting a sense of form. Remember also that the turquoise will neutralise your oranges as they are opposite colours and doing this will help you avoid saturated colours. If your colours are too saturated, it will knock the realism out of your painting. At the beginning of this video, I said there were two important things to take into account when painting an animal with stripes. I have just discussed the first one. The second is to do with brushwork. You must make sure you vary the direction of your strokes. Bear in mind how the direction of the fur travels, but also bear in mind your contour lines too. You need to suggest both. Vary the direction of your stripes. Don't paint around your stripes, paint through them. You will need to use a very soft brush to do this, otherwise you'll pull up your colours and your painting will go muddy. My rich black is transparent, so I need to be careful what I lay over the top and how I do this. Also remember the bigger blocks of colour too. Do not get lost in the detail of individual areas. Keep looking at the tiger as a whole. If you are struggling to do this, I would suggest pinning your reference photo to perhaps a wall approximately two metres from your workstation and then stand back and compare the two from a distance. Remember that painting in lots of detail will not be seen once the painting is viewed on the wall, so edit out as much of it as you can. If you are unsure of how to do this, try squinting at your reference photo. If you cannot see it when you are squinting, then there is no need to paint it. I hope you have enjoyed today's video and found it useful. Please like and subscribe if you can and check out my website sarahhallidayart.com where you will find examples of my work and also details of online classes that I run. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.